welcome to this psychology podcast on transcending the mind i regularly hear from people especially americans and europeans about the conscious mind and the unconscious mind can the mind be unconscious you know and i really question the research on this aspect and why i'm questioning it because mind is is pervading over the whole body number one and there are no two states of the mind mind is only one state so the patanjali yoga sutra and the vedic literatures actually do not accept this new dialogue or mythology being created by some researchers and therefore there is no such thing as conscious or unconscious mind mind is is what gives you another birth mind is always existing with you because that's like the the example is is like the operating system it is pervading over the entire body mind is the repository of past information now very interesting thing bhagavad gita talks about bhagavad gita is both both a scientific book as well as a cultural book as well as a religious book is followed by billions of people across the world when it comes to spirituality people consult bhagavad gita and uh, it is the only book which focuses on soul spoken by yogeshwar bhagwan krishna to arjun summarizing vedic knowledge now on the basis of that i refute all the modern scientists which talk about the conscious and subconscious mind they are creating they are creating more complexities so those of you who are listening and genuinely want to transcend the mind there is book of mind called transcending the mind you can check it out on amazon search psychology you'll see all my books over there now coming to this point there is a verse in bhagavad gita which says indriyani paranyahur indriye bhya parmana manasastu para buddhir buddhe paratastu sa so that is from the chapter 3 verse 42 do not read translations from european authors on bhagavad gita the purpose i am saying is because they do not represent bhagavad gita accurately they try to add things from their own culture into abrahamic culture into this bhagavad gita now bhagavad gita is for entire humanity it has nothing to do with any one culture is for every single human on the planet it is the only book which talks about soul now in this it says senses are higher than matter mind is higher than the senses intelligence is higher than the mind and atma is higher than intelligence there is no mention of two minds here now on this basis i am going to quote you so there are five but the mind works in vritti and yoga yoga is not a christian yoga or a goat yoga anyone who tries to say that way they are actually fooling you don't follow them especially in the western countries now in when i talk about the the mind so when usually people refer to subconscious mind based on what i understood is there is a mind which is visible and there is subconscious mind which is inside and it is programming needs to be done through subconscious to conscious mind is always conscious always conscious mind is recording everything that you do every single karma or action that you do in your life karma doesn't mean a punishing topic that oh your karma is going to catch you maybe there's another book of mine of my on karma which you can check it out the karma means any action like you can blink your eyelids you can blink your eyelids you breathe you speak you talk all karma you move your hands karma you move your pupils here and there that's karma so any action that you perform is a combination of intelligence mind and your senses and the driver is the atma soul is not the 
complete word for Atma. Soul doesn't is related to the body according to Abrahamic thought process. But in the traditional or Vedic thought process, soul is the one who drives your body. So soul, you can think of soul as a pilot in an airplane. The plane's engines are the senses which are working. The wiring of the plane is the mind which makes the senses work or the engines work. The directions from the cockpit or the digital interface which makes decisions. Nowadays most of the planes work on autopilot and also other advanced technologies like AI. That intelligence is the processor which is coming. But who is using the processor, the engines and the, the processor, the engines and the wiring is that is Atma. Atma is the pilot. So coming to the human experience, it is the Atma which is sitting in your body, directing your body. Atma is living its past karma today. Atma is the one which sees through your eyes. Atma is the one because of which your body is moving. Atma is the thing because of which your hair grows. Atma is the one because of which your eyes flutter. And Atma is the one which makes every single sense organ in your body function. How does Atma use it? Intelligence is not a bodily function. Intelligence comes from past life. That is a reward to you. If someone is higher intelligent, more intelligent, has higher intelligence, that means their past karma was such that intelligence was rewarded to them. And these are the basic concepts. I, have to, I will say it again and again. I am running Transcending the Mind Experience and those of you who want to join to get deeper into these topics, you can join the training program. I cannot teach you on a video. It has to be in person cannot be held on Zoom, cannot be held on any other aspect. So Atma is the driver of your entire experience. It uses intelligence which is rewarded to them, Atma, from past life karma, from this life karma, but usually past life karma, because past life karma makes your this birth happens. Anyone who tells you anything otherwise, don't get fooled by it. Atma uses your intelligence to take decisions. It's like binary, zeros and ones. Mind is carrying your impressions from many, many lifetimes in the past. That is also coming because of that you got your present body. Therefore, human life is precious. No one should lose hope. You should never lose hope. You can change your karma at any point of time and you can proceed to a higher destination. So mind is also coming from past life, makes up your entire body. It has only one state, torment state. Our mind is never active, Atma is active. Intelligence gives directions, sources past informations from the mind and I am telling you from many many references, Vedic references. I am talking you to from Narada Shukadev Muni conversation. I am talking to Markande Rishi conversation. These names you may not know, but you need to know. These are the people, ancient sages, ancient rishis. And the Atma is the one which creates your current experience. So it is better to when you use the Atma for your karma properly, means not use Atma. <laughs> Because you are the Atma, Aham Brahmasmi. So Atma uses mind, Atma uses intelligence. That's how your senses function. If you don't know these basic things, 
you can never be successful in controlling or transcending your mind. You can never control mind. You can go above the dictates of the mind. When the past images are stronger than current realities, then you get flown in the passage of time and you pass your life completely withered away as if you are just driven by the modes of nature that is guna prakriti prakriti guna sambhava prakriti is the one which which empowers guna you need to know guna without guna you cannot understand there is a lot of information i can tell you but i will tell you in person or in the course so understand atma drives energizes the intelligence lives the past life's intelligence and uses intelligence to take current decisions and the mind gives you options mind tells you based on past experience this is the experience you had for example again taking an example of an airplane airplane uses the example airplane it tells you some stored information and it says you have a confidence that when you press a particular button you are going to evoke a certain response because that memory is stored over there so you know this particular button intelligence knows this particular button is going to create this response which is carried forward by the mind so it's like a stored information so you know the previous experience similarly mind stores the information about a simple vanilla ice cream the taste of vanilla ice cream the taste of any other flavor you like and then that information is conveyed whether you like it or not like it the past experience shows you liked it or you did not like it everyone has acquired taste from past life everyone is individual so this philosophy if you do not understand this that you are an individual you are unique you won't be able to transcend the mind and then when you decide something take an example of a plane again the pilot presses a button and stored information he knows what is going to happen senses respond like the engines respond and and the flutters and the wings wings respond plane turns takes it right turn or left turn but it all depends on the driver if the driver is observing all the instrument panels and is aware he is peaceful if the rudders go elsewhere anywhere then it's an emergency situation then the pilot takes alternative actions whether he can take the plane manually into his control or leaves it to autopilot to take decisions and then accordingly he he studies the plane and when everything is working peacefully it is the atma which is feeling satisfaction or happiness again the reactions come from the mind the feeling of satisfaction feeling of happiness feeling of emergency past experiences when the intelligence is stronger it makes corrective action stronger that means intelligence is given to you so when you use your intelligence then you know whether you are achieving the right results or not so mind supplies that information back to you response comes back and this is how you as a living being or atma sitting in the body takes decisions and that's how it works now my question to all the people who are spreading the mythology of subconscious mind and conscious mind where is the subconscious mind here now i'll give you another aspect to it parmatma remember this word because we cannot use any other language words these are sanskrit words permanent their specific meaning parmatma means higher atma or which is also sitting in your heart which is sometimes called the second voice 
because you cannot function without Paramatma. And this Paramatma connects to everything else in the universe. It connects to Prakriti, means everything that you see with your own eyes is Prakriti. And the people whom you interact is called Bhut existences, living beings. And so when you interact, that is a Paramatma sitting in everybody's heart, all pervading aspect of Bhagwan is what making is what is making this communication study. Now this is theoretical information. How do you experience it? Because that makes it a science. So theoretical information being converted into a realized information, which is called Vigyan or science. Science is not a completely accurate term. English is a, you all know what is English is. English is a derived terms from other languages. And there are many things cannot be expressed freely in English, but I am telling it to you because, because that's what you can understand. Sanskrit word is Paramatma which means all pervading aspect of Atma, which is divine energy, universal consciousness. And that is the energy of a person. Many people call him different names. Sanskrit word is Dev. That's why you see Latin word Deos. That is Sanskrit word. Sanskrit word. Sanskrit is again a uh, westernized uh, pronunciation, Sanskrit word. The Sanskrit in Sanskrit is a very accurate language. So Paramatma, when you connect Atma with Paramatma, at that time you connect with the entire universe, all the different planetary existences. And when you connect with that, then you start experiences, experiencing higher version of visibility. You see things in a different way. And when you see things different way, your automatically mind is transcended. Because the mind came to you from a previous births. And the intelligence came to you from previous births. But this connection of Atma and Paramatma is technically called Yoga, Union, Yoga. Even Union is not a correct word for Yoga. So, when you uni unite yourself through your intelligence, through using your intelligence to connect with Paramatma, it is you are taking decision. Atma is taking a decision. You are using your intelligence through motivation like this program and then you connect with a higher source which is Paramatma. And then your mind becomes steady because the mind needs superior intelligence. And then when you become steady, you stop, start using your mind. Because mind is a tool given to you. Intelligence is a tool given to you. So use your intelligence, you use your intelligence as a tool to control the mind. And when the mind controls, then you start giving alternative aspects. You say, your hand starts moving in a different direction, your legs start moving in the right direction, your every organ of the body follows the mind because this body was made by a previous karma and that's how the mind is created. Mind is created through by you. You don't use the mind. So all the sciences which are given are completely illogical in the western world. Conscious mind, subconscious mind creating more confusion is very simple. Atma is you. Intelligence, mind is given by your previous life and the body is formed around your mind. And when you connect your Atma with Paramatma, everything starts getting aligned. And that process is called Sanatan or Dharma. And that process brings you happiness, peace and content. So don't get misguided by this conscious mind, some conscious mind debate. A lot of videos I saw and I could not understand what they are talking at all. 
they don't know what is mind, they don't know what is subconscious mind. My simple question to you is, if you ask somebody, where is your mind? Answer will be usually here. And you ask them, where is intelligence? Answer will be here. Wrong answers. It's because every organ of the body has unique function. How can brain have two functions? Then they say, brain has left side and the right side and the right side takes emotional decisions, left side, many scientific studies are there. But if you ask a neuroscientist or engineer, what are they going to say? They are going to say that the brain is inert and I would like to re see more researches on this through qualified people, researchers about the function of the brains. And I'll be speaking to some neuroscientists and understand more so that I can tell you more confirmed information based on my research. But as far as what I've been told is brain is always inert. When you open the cranium and you insert a rod, there is no sensation. So many, many medical sciences, they're using that information and they're thinking that the nerves electrical vibrations, electronic vibrations that is going too deep into this subject. And I will look, I'll come to that. I'll come to the next level because I want to make my study and I'm a practitioner, yoga practitioner for many, many years, more than two decades. And I would like to validate my own things using the modern parlance. But I can tell you the experience, steadiness, Happiness. Happiness is not external. Happiness is internal. You make yourself happy. But if you do the right things, then you become peaceful. When you are happy, you are automatically peaceful. Now, coming to the next aspect of this, which is again the subconscious mind. So subconscious mind kind of entity doesn't exist. There is only one state of the mind and the word one state of the mind is peaceful state. Mind is designed to be peaceful. It's just a storehouse of information. Intelligence is designed to be either passionate or ignorant or neutral. And therefore, when the intelligence is agitated, that's where you experience and you call it because you don't know the difference. You call the mind is disturbed. My mind is disturbed. No, your mind cannot be disturbed. It's just a storehouse of information. Intelligence is the one which gives you ideas, which gives you, because that is affected by the prakriti or the nature. Prakriti and nature is not a direct word. Prakriti means far more than nature. Prakriti when the modes of the prakriti, sat, raj, tama, affect the intelligence, then you feel disturbed. When it's in sat, means truthful state. Raja means passionate and tama means ignorant. When it is sat state, truthful state, you experience peace. For example, you get up from sleep, deep sleep. Now again, I'll cover the deep sleep and the sleep process also. And you will be feeling very happy about it when I clarify that doubt. All in the book, Transcending the Mind, and I am not promoting my book to you. It's my life's precious work. And I refer to my own translation, my own books all the time. I don't use other translations. I use the original translation of Bhagavad Gita and original translation of Patanjali Yoga Sutra plus my own study of Purana and Veda and Mahabharata and Ramayana. And I am also experimenting on myself. So, this is the exact science or way, a truthful way to understand yourself. So, understand, in mind does not react, mind just creates next body. It based on your experiences, based on your karma, creates the next body. And no ancient sage, I am following them, will be, I am telling them as it is what they have told. And these sages will tell you that focus on your Atma. 
you are the Atma. What you see in the mirror is a body produced because of previous karma, your mind and intelligence. This is the most basic knowledge before you can have spiritual experiences. Hallucinations, taking drugs, taking any kind of intoxication does not produce spiritual experiences. Spiritual experiences begin when you control your mind and intelligence and you are peaceful. That time your Atma, when it is connected with Paramatma, starts experiencing higher state of existence. And that person is called Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma, Na Shochati Na Kangshati, Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu, Mad Bhakti Labate Param. Then you start experiencing happiness, connected. And then no sorrow can touch you. No, you go beyond happiness and sorrow of this world. You experience a higher existence, a purposeful existence. You spread peace. You spread happiness, you spread love, you spread care, you spread everything, single thing positive which comes from Paramatma. Because Paramatma is always kind, he is not a vengeful God, a vengeful person, no. Paramatma is taking care of birds, taking care of elephants, taking care of lions, taking care of all kinds of beings that you see moving with your eyes. So, become aligned and that alignment is not conscious versus subconscious don't get into that debate that is misguiding you misleading you taking you to a you spend a lot of money people charge a lot of money for ideas which are new nothing there is there is no new idea in the world there are new ways of enjoying the world but there is no new idea you may call yourself very remarkable. Why do you think there is no idea? Don't get fooled. Ideas are very, ideas originate in the previous experience. That's how they, you get an idea. Previous experiences, previous experiences. You create future karma, future experiences by your current actions. So, how do you? say someone is more innovative because he has seen more things in the past. That's why this life he gets more ideas. Everyone has the same quantity of brain by design, anthropology study. But someone is more intelligent, someone is not so intelligent, someone is all not. So don't have to compare yourself. According to you, you are the best person on the planet and you are the best person on the planet. You are very unique. Now it's time to move forward. The more you come in touch with the divine energy, which is Paramatma, the more you transcend the effects of previous birth karma, previous mind, previous intelligence, you go beyond it. That's called transcending the mind. Join our courses to get a training because many people don't do the training. They, they think, they go through the YouTube videos, they try, just like to succeed in any sports, you need a coach. You need a coach. The traditional process. Because a coach, if he tries to invent new new things, and and then it may indulge, it may result in injury. So the coach has to follow a certain process. Coach has to follow the wisdom which is given to us from the beginning of this creation. This book Patanjali wrote, Yoga Sutra, wrote 3000 years ago. Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita roughly 7000 years ago. And there are many people who have been reading the Veda, which is Yoga Vashishta, very powerful book. It's in my library over there. People have been practicing yoga for millions of years, not today. The European authors will tell you the word yoga came in 11th century or 12th century. Totally wrong. Europeans discovered late. That's your, their problem. I'm not trying to belittle them for anything. But I'm just saying mythology that they have created is destroying their own societies more than anyone else. So we are all living in the West. It's time to bring the right things. Honestly, 
with high integrity, truthfully, and also beyond which can be reasonably practiced. When people complain about the social violence and other th aspects which are plaguing the society, lack of decision making, lack of proactive initiatives, because we have lost one path, one major thing, is the path of collective good. Our diets are horrible. Our lifestyles are horrible. We are creating human beings or we are using human beings as workers. We are using human beings just as resources. And we are ignoring the most important aspect of human being and that is Atma. So join me in the Transcending the Mind courses and many other courses we have. We have Weekend Gurukulam for children and adults and we have 12x Debunking Mythology course. We have Yoga Sutra course for advanced students and for everyone else we have Transcending the Mind experience. A course which can give you a new perspective like I just said. Thank you and peace.